you've been thinking about starting a river table or resin project, now is literally the perfect time. Upstart Epoxy is having a 25% blowout sale going on right now until the 30th, which is an insane deal on top of their already amazing prices. Click the link below to let them know I sent you, and don't worry, if you miss this sale, I've got a code for you to save 5% when you use it at checkout. So I'm kicking this project off by building a form for this desk with a twist. This is what I'll use to pour the epoxy in later in this video once the desk is ready. But first, in the spirit of being frugal and all things resourcefulness, I'm going to attempt to build a form slash router sled table combo. So the first thing I wanted to do here is put the outer rails of the router sled on. And you can see I'm drilling two sets of holes here. One is for the router sled rails and the other set is for the inner wall of the form. Also, this MDF board is very prone to splitting, so I made sure and pre-drilled any holes before driving screws into it. It's time to start slapping that router sled together, so I took some measurements from the outer rails and the base of the router and started cutting up some MDF board. I left a very small clearance for the router base, which has a flat spot on one side, and you'll see when I do the test fit, because what I don't want is the router bit catching or binding on material while it's cutting, possibly spinning the handle around and injuring me. Now what I'm doing is measuring outside to outside of the sled rails and I'll cut out some stops to attach to the bottom of the sled to keep it from falling off one side or the other and that'll just prevent the router bit from driving into the material and gouging it out. Here I'm just going to measure and cut out some stops for the inside of the router sled on top and that's just going to keep me from pulling or pushing the router too far in one direction or the other and that way I don't cut into the rails or myself on accident. Now all we've got to do is crank up the router and make a few passes, gradually getting deeper and deeper until we're all the way through. And then we've got a router sled that's ready to rock and roll. Moving on to the slab, we've got our first real look at it here and right off the bat you can tell it's not looking so hot. It sat on the elements for about a year and just look at the cupping on this thing. We weren't even sure if this was going to be usable or not, but my first thought was to just get the hand planer on it, start working out that cupping, and just look at the grain underneath. I want to take a minute here to give you a little backstory on this slab while the video plays in the background. So a number of years ago, this tree was struck by lightning on my family's property and just never seemed to recover, so we knew it had to be chopped down. My stepdad had the idea to take it to a mill and get it cut into lumber where we found out that it was cherry wood. Being that the tree was still mostly alive when it was taken to the mill, it was a very deep red color to begin with. But over time, as it sat, it started to give us this beautiful light color which I fell in love with. The majority of the lumber was given away or donated and some of it was sold because at the time we legitimately had no plans or ideas of what to do with the lumber, we just thought it was cool. So by now in the video, it's getting really dark and I've been hand planning for a long time and I start to realize I'm taking way too much material off of this slab trying to flatten it. And this was foreshadowed by my stepdad earlier. So I finally decided to take his advice, which I should have done to begin with because admittedly, he's always right. And that was to go ahead and cut the rough dimensions of the desk widthwise, then rip the slab in half, making it easier to fit onto the router sled table, flattening it while preserving much more material in the thickness than if I were to continue planning it in one piece. I can't even explain how exciting of an experience this was because this is the first time that I get to lay the halves of the slab up on the table and get a rough idea of what the desk is going to look like when it's finished. Finally, it's time to put the new router sled through its paces. We elevated half of the slab up on a piece of MDF, and I cut out some wedges of varying sizes from a piece of 2x4 that I bought for bracing whenever we go to do the pour. Now that one side was completely flat on both halves of the slab, I decided to lay them next to each other and run the router across both in one pass. This was to ensure that they'd both be mostly the same height whenever putting them in the form and getting ready for the pour, because I wanted to minimize the amount of flattening that had to be done after the epoxy had cured. And only after flattening the slab did I notice this spot here, which looks like it's charred, which I think may have came from the lightning strike itself. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Either way, it's pretty cool. 
Another one of my favorite things that I discovered about this slab after flattening is this spalted edge. I think it adds so much character and makes this build beautiful. Next, I got right to work removing any soft spots in the wood that I could get a hold of with a chisel. And this process took way longer than I'm portraying in this video because I went through every void anywhere I could fit my chisel or a tiny scraper into to make sure there wasn't anything that could break off or float to the top or leave air bubbles in whenever doing the pour. Next, I took this wire wheel, which came in very handy for this project, and I'll actually tag it in the description below if you want to pick it or any of the other tools that you see in this project up for your own build. But it did such a good job at cleaning up the live edges and the voids in this wood. This next part is probably one of my favorite aspects of this build and one of the things that I was most excited to try, and I was almost talked out of it. But I decided if it didn't work, then at least I tried, right? So since I had access to the site where this tree was originally cut down from, I noticed there were some limbs of varying sizes still laying around the old stump. And one of the things that I started to get most worried about with this build was the price of epoxy because of the width that I wanted this desk at meant that it was going to take a lot more to fill the wide gap. So once again with frugality as my main motivating factor, it was my idea to take some of this free fallen wood and use it to take up volume where I would otherwise be spending a ton of money on epoxy. I was actually able to salvage a very large limb that had fallen from this tree as well, and I used it to build an entryway table for the same office this desk is going in. If you guys want to see that video, blow the comments up and let me know if it's worth throwing that video together. Once I got a good flat spot playing down on these limb pieces, I broke the chisel back out and started hacking away at any soft wood that could cause issues during the pour, and it uncovered some really unique characteristics in this wood that I think look awesome. My sister randomly offered to help in hand with this build and I was more than happy to have some company in the shop while working on this thing because these time lapses can be a little misleading as to how long it actually takes for some of these processes. Then we decided to move on to sealing the edges of the slab and any voids that were created when removing softwood with a 1 to 1 ratio quick setting tabletop epoxy. We also took this time to do the same thing with the edges of the limb pieces that were going to be bonding with the river epoxy. All that's left to do now is to scuff up those edges with some sandpaper, that way the deep pour epoxy has something to bond to. With all the prep work done with the slab halves, I couldn't avoid it any longer. It was time to get back to work on building out the form and getting ready for the pour. The form is finished, the slab halves are in place, and the island pieces are roughly where I want them to go. That's what I ended up calling the limb pieces in the middle of the river part. Now it's time to start bracing this thing up so nothing floats around during the pour, and I even got my stepdad to sign his name next to mine on the underside of this desk to commemorate it for years to come. And if you can believe it, we still hadn't chosen a color to mix with the resin for the river at this point in the build, so we mixed a bunch up with some water in the color range I was interested in just to get an idea of what it would look like. Let me know in the comments below which color you would have went with, and I'll show you how we got the color that I went with now. I know it's been done a million times for these types of projects, but my eyes were really drawn to the blue end of the spectrum for this desk, so this Caribbean blue and blue-green really captured my imagination. And I wanted to see what they look like mixed together, but I wasn't 100% sold on it. So we decided to do a test piece with all three colors side by side, the Caribbean blue, blue green, and both of them mixed together in an offcut of this slab from earlier in the video. With a quick sand and a couple light coats of finish over the test piece, I was ready to make my decision. 
I wanted to go with both of these colors mixed together. Now it's time to start mixing this resin and getting ready for the pour. So now that the main pour is done, I probably need to explain a couple of things. I wanted some bracing for the underside of this desk for added stability and to minimize the chances of it cracking where the epoxy meets the wood. I also needed a good place for the mounting brackets that came with the legs I bought for this desk. And I didn't want to screw directly to the underside of the desk for these legs because that would have meant half of the mounting hardware would have been going into epoxy. I didn't want that kind of stress over a small surface area. And since I plan on using this as a sitting standing desk, I tried to account for the pressure of me leaning against it while working, or heaven forbid, in the future, someone sitting on this thing. So this was one of the factors that went into me deciding to do the pour for this desk upside down. So we strategically drilled holes in the bottom of the desk to put these threaded inserts in, and these would be used to mount the brace straight to the table. Then after cleaning it up a little bit and rounding off any sharp corners, just in case my knee bumped into it while I was sitting at the desk working, I used the brackets that came with these legs as a template to mark out where the holes would go. Then I tapped these holes out. That way, rather than screwing directly into the underside of the desk, the screws for these legs would have a secure mounting point right onto this brace.
So we had a good bit of epoxy left, and I wanted an easy way to finish off the underside of the desk, covering any of the imperfections from the initial pour. So we did the calculations and figured out exactly how much epoxy we needed to fill this thing up right to the top of the braces. And this might be a little nerve wracking being that once this resin sets, these braces aren't going anywhere. But we double and triple checked all of our measurements beforehand, and even test fit the legs on upside down to make sure they fit. So by now, it's been a couple of weeks, everything is cured, and it's time to bust this thing out of the mold. One of the smartest things we did with this form was to add that floating layer of MDF that I covered in Tyvek tape earlier underneath the slab halves before the pour. That way, when all the sides were removed, we were able to move the desktop around freely. That allowed us to drive wedges in between it and the MDF to remove it without too much trouble. This is arguably the most important part of this build, and that is the motorized legs from Autonomous. I can't say enough good things about these legs, the design, the functionality, but mostly the price. I literally almost spent more for a good set of static legs that are stuck in place forever before I found these. I've got four programmable slots to set whatever height I want, and it's so quiet. I put the link for these down in the description if you want to go check them out. Okay, so I've breezed through a lot of what's happened during the last part of this build, so let's summarize a little bit. I set the desktop up on the router sled and flattened the whole thing. I mixed up some tabletop epoxy with some more of the mica powder pigment to fill any more voids that were on the top. I cut all the edges down to its final dimension with the circular saw. I used the router to cut a relief chamfer around the underside of the entire desk and also added a much smaller one on top so it was more comfortable to rest my arms on the desktop. I also used some black CA glue to fill any small pinholes or voids and this stuff is a must. When you use it with the activator, it dries instantly and you can sand it right away. Click the link in the description to check out the one I got for this project, but seriously, you've got to get some of this stuff. After that, I sanded the whole top down, moving through all the grits from 150 to 2000, which I realized after the fact this was a little overkill, especially considering the finish I'm using only calls for up to 400 grit. And if you've made it this far into the video, first of all, thank you so much. Drop a like if you've gotten anything useful, it would help out so much. This is where you guys get to have a little fun in the comment section. So I decided to use an oil-based polyurethane satin finish, which is very far from the most popular choices here on YouTube. My idea behind this being that I wanted the protection similar to epoxy, but I wanted a finish similar to Rubio Monocoat, which is what I use for my entryway table. And it's literally a fraction of the cost of these two. So let me know in the comments how you would have finished this table. I'm really curious to hear everybody's thoughts on this. And I will say, after using this desk for about six or seven months now, it's holding up great, it's fairly scratch resistant, and I think it still looks so beautiful. 
I think in total I did about six coats of this finish, sanding between 800 to 1000 grit in between each coat, and then finishing it off with a wet sand at 2000 grit. And something else that might be fairly unconventional is I decided to finish this thing off with some car polish. We tried using a low RPM buffer at first, but it really wasn't doing anything at all, so I busted out the big guns with the high RPM orbital buffer, and it started giving me that perfect satin sheen that I was after. I initially used the sticky backed cable ties this kit came with for my cable management, but after a couple of months, they've all since failed, and I'm on the hunt for new cable management solutions, so if you've got any ideas, drop them in the comments. I'd love to take a look. I can't thank you guys enough for sticking around to the end. I really hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. Drop a like if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button if you feel like I've earned it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.